minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Tony Spada from East Hartford, Connecticut. What's going on, Tony? Uh, it's just practicing as usual. <laughs> <laughs> practicing or uh, or tracking? Uh, you, you're doing some uh, some work for some other bands. I, I believe we were talking about also, correct? We... Yeah, I'm doing some multitasking today. There do, you... uh, I'm doing some shows. Uh, I do a lot of TV film stuff for like History Channel and those types of uh, cable networks. So um, right now I'm working in the midst of uh, writing the demos for my new solo album while I while I submit you know more music for these guys to queue up for TV shows, all those things like you know uh, American Pickers and Pawn Stars and all that reality TV stuff that I don't like to watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, you, come on! You got to support uh, who, who's feeding you. Yeah. Well, yeah, true. You know, I'm watching it now because I found out from the publisher. You know, they, these things that go in and they show um, 
repeats. These shows are repeated. So, you know, I'm watching like sometimes three or four different stations at the same time. And then I just gave up. I said, I, I can't, you know, I'm going to, what am I going to buy four television sets here and watch them all at the same time? <laughs> so so we're, we're, we're banking on the honesties of the, uh, the uh, publishing people to, you know, hopefully they're keeping track of all this stuff. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, let's let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what we want to start off with. Uh, well, I guess we'll start back uh, back in uh, back in the eighties. Um, cool. Yeah. You you were uh, with a uh, a national band, um, Holding Pattern. Well, Is that correct? Yeah, I started Holding Pattern, and uh, actually we started about uh, early eighties, eighty eighty two ish area, and then uh, you know being that we were looking to. Start. I got tired of playing the bar scene, so we were doing, you know, of course, it was like everybody else, we were doing cover material. And then I started getting interested in you know, more advanced composition stuff. I started listening to bands like Yes and, and people like uh, Genesis, you know, guys who were writing a little bit more adventurous uh, composition. So we it started, a, <laughs> it's a funny story, actually. It was uh, myself and a drummer. We started to write demos, and I've written a couple of things, and we didn't really have a band, so we submitted a, a two, I think it was a two-song demo to a couple of college stations, and all of a sudden it started to get a lot of notice. We, we actually made like number one, number three on HUS, WWR, all these Connecticut stations. And then we were offered a gig, but at that point we still weren't a band, we were really just two guys. So we started to, you know, audition some guys to, we need a, a steady keyboard player. So our first gig uh, professionally with that lineup was opening for one of my, my favorite British prog rock bands at Trinity College. And before you know it, 180 college radio stations nationwide had us in the top 10 playlist. So we had to, then we were kind of forced to make a record. We kind of built up in that manner, you know. And then uh, in 83, we did our first MTV video, which got us... Uh, some label interest and uh so you know we started to open up for bands like kansas and and then uh, a little bit later on you know we started headlining our own shows um across the country and, and here i am now walking around in my backyard <laughs> and, yeah yeah you're you're actually uh working for yourself right you're just um networking yeah, yeah, yourself out do. Yeah, I mean, I really don't have time for anything else, you know, when I'm not, I mean, I do a lot of touring internationally, and in between that, I have a lot of, I teach a lot of guitar here, I have some great guitar players that are up and coming here, and, um, you know, I do a lot of uh, multitasking stuff, you know, I mean, I do, uh, like I said, I do comp a lot of composition, I work with some other artists, I produce a bunch of different records, and um, so, you know, there's always, there's always some fun stuff going on around here at the Tony's Music Farm. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so what's the um, the outlook on uh, Holding Pattern? Any uh, any um, reunion? Uh, have you guys actually been playing out uh, a couple yeah, shows we, here and there? Uh, and Yeah, we did. Uh, we've been touring pretty regularly. We, the last gig we did was in France. We had um, gone and played over France. We've been going to Europe quite a bit over the past four or five years. So, you know, we were in Italy, we went to Japan, we've been, you know, everywhere. A lot of Eastern European gigs. We uh, headlined, like, Baltic Prague Festival and one day up there, and then we did, a, you know, it was a three-day, it's like Woodstock. We do a lot of these big, we did this uh, huge one in France last summer. It was amazing. It was uh, south of France, uh, right on the beach, and it's very big, you know. It's funny, you know, to, to go around the world and you meet these people in foreign markets that, have been following your career forever. They knew, they knew more about my music than I did. Some of these people I knew. <laughs> They'd come over and ask you for an autograph after, and they'd bring like you know, a tour poster from like 1992. I'm mean, like, oh my god, <laughs> you know. I'm like, where did you get that? I, I don't even have that. Cool. So cool. then um, I'm trying to think. Uh, around the early 90s, I started to do I started to do solo albums because of. What was happening within the, the band, well, actually within the management of the band, they were trying to get us to do a little more commercial thing. That was the attempt of the first video, was to you know add a vocal. And So actually, our first M the MTV video, the first one we did, was called Mercenary. It was a vocal tune, and uh, we 
kind of I personally didn't like the direction it was going because I felt like you know the, these guys were trying to make us into a dime a dozen band at that point you know I thought that you know some of the specialness was going out the window so that's so when I decided you know I want to get out and make a solo album and, and just tour with a whole different lineup outside of the activity of holding pattern which was and actually looking back now was a good thing because I was able to uh get some uh, a different market you know I tapped into a guitar market thing now it wasn't just me uh, you know as a member of a band mm -hmm. it was uh you know uh, a big big turning point for me was meeting Steve Morris the guitarist um in my opinion is probably the best player on the planet compositionally and technically you know as a guitar player and and writer and he really really took an interest in what I was doing. So he had introduced me to his manager, Frank Solomon, and Frank started to book me with the Steve Morris band, which was like, hello, you can pinch me now. Yeah. Am I really, <laughs> is this really true. happening? Yep. So you, you get these certain things, you kind of wake up and you go, wow, you know, I don't suck because, you know, it was like a reality check. I'm like, oh my God, Steve Morris. So I became friends with Steve and I got a lot of exposure playing on shows with him so i was able to get an ernie ball endorsement through him and and um a lot of things like that started happening i started doing some gigs with the guitarist from yes and 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 we were doing a lot of shows with the band kansas sure. uh, who were kind of like in the same style somewhat and uh, so it was good so at that point i was thinking you know this is good i could go i can have the band um, you know and do my own thing on the side which ultimately, you know, we, the band did end up breaking up for a while, and then we had a reunion in, uh, let me think, was that 2007? I had written this album, which was originally slated to be a solo album, and then I had this idea one night, you know, it'd be nice to maybe see if we can get together some of the old guys and see if they'd be interested in doing a reunion album, like you mentioned earlier, and we did. So we went out, uh, I think the first gig was in Japan, actually, and uh, so every once in a while, you know, we'll do, um, now I'm focusing on a new solo album, but we do get out and do some touring. And uh, so it's it's fun, you know, to kind of be able to do both. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, all right, let me ask you this. Um, I was going through your uh, your bio, your, your resume, very impressive resume, and uh, you are part of the uh, Harford... Uh, Symphony Orchestra, is that true? Well, actually, no. I'm. Uh, that was a just a really cool thing that happened last uh, November. Um, I got a call from Harvard Symphony director, and I thought it was a joke at first. <laughs> they said uh, we'd like we want to invite you to be the guest guitar electric guitarist of the symphony. And I was like, well, are you trying to hurt me here? Or <laughs> that they were fooling around. <laughs> So I said, yeah, you know, of course. I mean, to me or to any musician, a serious musician, that's like the highest honor you're ever going to get in this business. You know, I, I believe it. You know, if, if, if any, in fact, I just saw Steve Morris, a video of him playing with the London Symphony from, uh, I think, last year. And when I talked to Steve, you know, he said the same thing once. He says, you know, being able to play in, a, in an orchestra is like, you, you can't say no to that. So I went in, and it was it was pretty crazy because of the, uh, you know, they they weren't used to, or the conductor was not used to working with electric guitars. So here we are, you know, my guitar tech's bringing in all this gear yeah, <laughs> to the yeah. Bushnell <laughs> Marshall stacks, and what's going on here, kind of thing. Yeah, and uh, it went over real good. In fact, uh, I did a couple of things with them. I did a week at the Bushnell Theater. Which, you know, me growing up as a kid, you know, sure. if you can play the bush, you know, that's, that's like, yeah, the, ultimate, you know, like uh, the Palladium. Sure, in London, you know? sure. And uh, so it went, uh, went down real good. I, um, the first night, it was very, very weird because we got finished and the, the conducts, so you know, I walked off stage after the, the, the concerto was done and I got called back for a couple encores, but I didn't have an encore prepared, so... They kept throwing me out from the wings. Go, oh, take a bow, take a bow. So this went on three, three, four times. So the next night, I I made sure I had uh, 
something ready. So I came out and we had encores every single night of the show. It was, so for me, the biggest thrill was that and being asked to sign the wall. They have the famous wall there at the theater where all the the uh, artists, the classical artists that played there, signed the wall. And I felt so. The guy hands me a sharpie. Said, "You know, we'd be honored." And I'm like. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so you could just kind of like, all right. Well, uh, how, so that was kind of, how come that's uh, not up on your Facebook page, man? I would have taken a picture of that. Actually, I think there is a photo of that in one of my uh, profile. What well, they have those the album photos? Oh, uh, the, yep. The folders there, yeah. It's one of the photo albums. There's a picture of uh, me and, this, and uh, one of the stage directors. And that to me was, you know, that was just a. A nice little uh, gig that came along, and it was it was, you know, sometimes they go, well, I can't believe we did that, and it went down really good, and you know, for them being, uh, they're such a highly uh, respected orchestra, you know, it really, to me, just it was uh, awesome to get that kind of uh, invitation and, and to that kind of experience, playing in that theater because as a kid, it was like that was at the Emerald City, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you can get a gig at the Bushnell, what's better than that? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I was like, wow, I, I could retire now and say, hey, I did something. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, listen, um, all right, we'll talk about the, uh, the solo uh, music. Um, you sent me uh, three songs, and um, actually uh, the third song I just got yesterday, Iraqi Roll, which... Um, Definitely, um, I, I like the sound, the uh, diversity in it. Um, definitely uh, fits my my you might yeah the high energy sure uh, definitely uh, is one of my, it's my favorite um, out of, out of the three. I'm sure you've got a bunch more which uh, we're gonna yeah, need, we're gonna need a, more <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, we're we're gonna need more you know because we, we pride ourselves on not playing the same song over and over and over. Uh, oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, There's actually that song we did. I think we were doing. I was in the midst of doing a bunch of shows with Morris, and I remember that particular track as we would we had gone in to do um, some stuff from my. Uh, second solo album, The Human Element, and I believe that track that you played was done in one take. What? No. And I think I came in, I came in, and then I threw some overdubs. I think on it after, yep. you know, before before we mixed it. I think I said I'm going to add a backing, a uh, little backing guitar line. I think I just doubled like one of the bass parts for a minute or something in the middle of that. But yeah, something cool. like that. Definitely. And and I think that song was also featured. They use that a lot in the. Um, some of these TV shows that I was telling you about, I heard it on the season premiere of New York Inc. one night. Okay, cool. And then I heard it. Huh? Cool. <laughs> Great show. <laughs> no kid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hell yeah. That's, so that's... What, else you, what else you got? I just sent you. Um... Yeah, I got, you got uh, two or three other songs. Yeah, uh, now I, I got a few questions, though. First of all, uh, do you do all your own studio work? Uh, are you mix and master, or uh, do you have a. Well, I hear. That's a great question. I have a studio in my home. I basically write the demos here, and I track some of the guitars and some of the keyboard stuff. But then later on, I transfer it over to um, a bigger studio so we can add the live drums and you know and do all the mixing there. And uh, I miss the days where we actually used to go. I used to go to L.A. to do all the mastering. I did a record deal with this company out of Los Angeles, so... We used to do, uh, they'd fly me out and they'd do mastering at Precision, which was a great place. But now a lot of these studios have a mastering program right there. So, uh, you know, we could do it right in the house. Cool. But no, right here, I like working on the guitars here because I could spend, you know, two or three days on a solo instead of eating up company money, you know, and going, oh, you know, I, got, I actually got bitched at by a label one time because of that. They said we we've sent over more money. I mean, you've got fifteen solos of this on this one song. When's it gonna be when's it gonna be done? I says when I'm when I'm done. Yeah. So they getting real. yeah. When I perfect it. So, yeah. yeah, I didn't want to bite the hand that was feeding me there either, you know. Sure. Sure. All right, uh, another question for you. What's what's your uh favorite guitar that you got in your uh in your house there? Okay, well, I got a house full of guitars. My main uh, guitars that I use is our uh, modified Fender Lead 2s. Uh, in 93 or 92, 
uh, a friend of mine had let me borrow this guitar, and I loved the neck. And then uh, I, I was like, I had a strap. I think I traded him for it. And then uh, I did a bunch of shows on that, but I knew it needed some different sounds. It needed, it needed to be kind of updated. And as it turned out, Steve Morse was doing um, endorsement of the same guitar for Fender. So I talked with him about changing the electronics. And so now uh, it's basically a totally modified. I have two of them. One's black and one's like a, uh, a very, very light. Uh, I think they call it Daphne Blue or something like that. And it's nice. It's got a MIDI pickup on it. It's got two, uh, it's got a humbucker in the back. It's a dual sound. And I use a, a rail Seymour Duncan in the front. And it's got a great tone. I had uh, a good friend of mine who's a luthier refretted it, both guitars. He refretted them with uh, nice medium jumbo frets. Thing plays great. Mm -hmm. It's the nicest neck in the world. And, and one day I realized this is exactly like the neck on my first guitar when I was like, 11 years old. Started to practice it. <laughs> yeah. I, once we finally did it, I'm like, I know, this is like a Fender Mustang. Cool, cool. So it's a, it's a nice nice guitar, and they very versatile. I could play jazz on it. I could play metal on it. I could do country picking on it if I, you know, shut off one of the coils in the back position. Real nice guitar. Sure, very versatile. All right, what's your uh, favorite gadget? My favorite gadget for, uh, let's see, uh... You're talking sound gear, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your floorboard, you know, uh, your 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 your, your pedal board, yeah. Because we got a lot of bands out here, young and upcoming bands. Um, that um, so I'm trying to give them a little insight. You know, they're, they're listening in. Okay, and, sure. No, yep. that's a great question. Um, again, you know, uh, my straight gadget is I use straight heads, uh, Marshall JCM 900s, and uh, again, getting back to a, a Steve Morse thing. Steve taught me that. If you play one side of your system with no effects and one side with effects, it's the way to go. So we were doing a um, what we call a wet dry amp, and we run some all the effects go through uh, the second amp, and all the straight dry signal goes through. Let's say in my case the left amp, and through a bunch of different uh, volume controls, I could bring in different types of. Uh, Delays. I use a bunch of uh, uh, rack, three three different rack units with different delays and room sounds and stuff. And that's basically my rig. I don't think I even use any pedals. I'd have to think about that. No. I think I had an octaver pedal or something. No. Okay. Uh, everything with me is the straight straight heads, okay. and I'm just using the delays and um, you know choruses and stuff through these rack uh, systems that. That I use. It's nice when I go on tour. I just uh, all they do is they just ship the the rack, and uh, it's like a pedal board. And I use the back line. They, you know, we have a contra like a a tech rider, and they supply the marshals on the other yeah. end, so we don't have to travel with a cool. ton of gear, which is nice. Beautiful. All right, what what's your uh, next up and coming big show that you're looking forward to? You got something uh, in the future? Well, I'm working on a new solo album, so on the new album's done, we're going to tour. Okay. Of course, we're going to, we'll be back out, uh, and I'm just trying to, actually, we I passed on a couple of uh, offers already. One was to go back to um, Eastern Europe. We did a lot of gigs up in, uh, like, um, you know, uh, Finland area, um, Lithuania, uh, countries like Poland and Latvia and stuff, and I had to pass on that because I really didn't want to go back out and do another tour with the same show because we had done that twice and i said no i'm just going to hold off so right now what i'm doing is i'm writing and doing a lot of music for tv i've done a i'm on um we just finished a couple of tracks for this band archangel from connecticut yeah uh, yeah well, a, sure yeah, canada Canada, of course, of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah. The small yeah. little circle we have going here. Yeah. Well, I'll you know, Jimmy me. Bell's on. Jimmy Bell's on uh, right after uh, our interview at 11 o'clock. And um, he, yeah, Jimmy he just told me that he's on the same album. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yep. Sure. It's coming is. out in August. And we're kind of excited about it because it's yep. on the same label that Yes is on and Journey and Six cool. and some of these other semi prog bands. And uh, so yeah, I was talking to Jim, and and uh, I was 
talking about Jeff Kanata. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I saw him on his new album. He goes, so am I. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even know that. So I have no idea what track he's on. <laughs> I played on, I think, one of the singles that's going to come yeah. out. Yeah. Oh. It was a real nice record. They just signed with uh, Frontiers Records. Frontier Records, sure. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and uh, so and then I'm, I'm working on another project with uh, a new artist starting next week. I, I have a couple of studio dates at... Uh, an area studio. This guy's an amazing engineer, John Bolduck, and uh, he's phenomenal. I mean, I love working with this guy, and, and as much as some of the guys I liked in L.A. that I've worked with, uh, Kevin Gilbert was uh, a good friend of mine up until he died, but he was a Grammy Award uh, Warner Brothers producer. His girlfriend was Cheryl Crow. He's the one that got Cheryl Crow. The, he wrote, like I think, 80% of her first album. And uh, his untimely death was pretty tragic. But he's a lot like that. He's real mellow, really knows his gig. And we've done enough recordings together where we kind of read each other real good. Sure, sure. He knows instantly when I don't like something without me even saying it. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. my thing is, you know, I, I do all my own album producing. So when I work with other engineers, I, you know, I don't like the fact you have to translate through an engineer, you know what I mean, to, to try to explain him. Where I work with John, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. I don't like it. Yeah. And he'll go, all right, blah, 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 and he knows what to do. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, hey, I got a, a quick question. I went to school with uh, Tony Spada back in uh, in the 70s and uh, or 80s, most mainly the 80s. You got uh, family in uh, Newington? Uh, well, actually, I have a family in the Weathersfield area. Weathersfield? And in Weathersfield. See, now you pronounce my name Spada, but yeah. we were actually Spada. Okay, but yeah. In Weathersfield, but in Weathersfield, my cousins, is, oh, they've been known as, they call them Spada. Right, so that's, that's, that's the, the, okay, that's the family I knew, and that's why I was good. I, I had said that the first time uh, I played, I said, oh, I hope I'm saying it right, but. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's weird, I don't yeah. know, I don't really, I'm not sure if I have any, uh, yeah, I'm sure I, would, I do, though, yeah. I think. It, it was Spada, yeah, Tony Spada. I went to school with him Tony, for years. Tony. Yeah, yeah. When I first saw your name, I, and I, I, I looked at your picture. I said, "No, that's not him." But uh. <laughs> when we were in Italy, uh, one of the tours, there's, uh, I had this up on my page one time on Facebook, and there was some guy, supposedly who had, he's an older guy, and he had a music school, and his name was Tony Spada too. So I searched it and I found it and he, he shows them on stage with like a bunch of kids playing guitar and he's got these big you know band you know those music stands with the, the guy's name on it sure yep. and he's like Tony Spotted Tony Spotted Tony <laughs> I never got a chance to get in and, and I was going to go down and try to meet him you know but instead, I spent the day off, Bruce, in Venice on my birthday. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, I've, I've never made it there. You know, the closest uh, uh, the closest I got to uh, Italy was Mulberry Street in New York City. <laughs> that's cool. that's cool. that's, <laughs> hey, that's, that's cool <laughs> enough for me. You know, then we had Franklin Ave, of course, uh, Bob Fangul oh, and, and, and yeah, Hartford. Yeah. Man. So, I remember that. It was my birthday, uh, so I wanted to take a gondola ride mm -hmm. to the... You know, the guy in the striped shirt there, the gondolier, he was sure. singing to me on my birthday. Oh, well, so I'm here. I'm like, this is great, man. <laughs> beautiful. Then we went over to the uh, Leaning Tower of Pizza, I yeah, called it. Pizza. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go out with uh, some of your uh, sites. I mean, we got them up. Uh, you saw the banner. You see how we do it here. We, yeah, uh, they've been nice. What's yeah, we on? put up all the... Um, all the links, and uh, hopefully we didn't miss any, but uh, where can people go to... Um, catch up on you, your, your music, um, go ahead, it's your chance. Well, they can, always, they can always check their websites, you know, and then uh, we have, uh, let me think what else I could send you. As far as, like, records and stuff, we're available worldwide, so we're everything, you know, iTunes, anybody that sells CDs, Amazon. I mean, we have, right now, I have, like, 170 different companies that are, are that are selling our wow. stuff. So beautiful. And thank God for that, because... You know, we 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 need to eat. You know, <laughs> yep. you know it's nice to play the guitar, and, and but what I found over the years is to make money in the in the business, you got to multitask, man. You know, and it's like I said, you know, writing music for film, touring, making some records, doing production, doing some teaching, doing guitar clinics, and so things like that are really nice. I do a couple of um, we do a lot of festivals. 
the guy that did our last album cover, Breaking the Silence, is a, a uh, famous British artist. He did all the Genesis covers, and he's a very good friend of mine. So we do like near fest. We'll go up there and sign sign stuff in, in the merchandising table, and you know we have a lot of fun and we'll make money there. He sells his paintings like you know six seven hundred dollars a clip, mm -hmm. and so you know we'll do a lot of that kind of stuff. So just stay active. You gotta and and be and survive. You got to be able to do a lot of different things nowadays. It's not just like it was in the in the old days, you know. Cool. Yeah, network, networking. You got to network, push, push, push. All right, Absolutely. well, Tony, uh, it was great having you on. And this, yeah, this won't be the last uh, time we're gonna. Uh, uh, we, we we like to do return trips uh, with the artists. And um, um, any new music that you get or that you want to have uh, aired and uh, get. Get some feedback on you. You know where to send it. We love playing. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, in fact, we should be. Uh, I hope to be in the studio within uh, a couple of months, and then back out on the road within like eight months. So yeah, cool. I'll definitely we'll stay in touch for cool. sure. Cool. So I love uh, love supporting and networking with my uh, yeah, Hartford, you Connecticut. Really, uh, thank you so much. My paisans really here. Nice I got you. you, Jimmy Bell. I got uh, Bruce Gregory too, another great solo artist. Um, and you tell Jimmy Bell, go four notes. You can go chromatic, you'll never miss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, know, he'll know who you're talking about. All right. He's probably listening I in. I, I believe he's, uh, if he's got time uh, listening before our show, he, he, he checks in. So oh, hopefully yeah. Jimmy, that. Jimmy and I go back. Yeah. To your, uh, he's, he's a phenomenal guy. I love him. You right. know, he's, a, he's a real nice, what I call a real nice Italian guy. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> He's got a big yeah. heart, man. He's a hey, he's a stand up guy, you know? Capisce? No, he is. I, I <laughs> All right, Three Tony. Kids. We're gonna roll out with Out the Other and uh great to have you on board on the PhD radio show and uh people listening in, if you wanna uh, check out his sites, we got them up on our page. So um, Thank you so much, Bruce. Hey Tony, we'll be talking. Tony yeah, absolutely, man. I'll talk to you. Tony Spada. Great talking to you, bro. Thank you. Peace out. Bye-bye.